and unfortunately there is no effective treatment yet. All treatment options are aimed at reducing symptoms the coronavirus might cause. Hey there, welcome back to How to Medicate and welcome to this new video on the coronavirus. Today we will be covering all current and future treatments on the coronavirus and I will be making a separate video on vaccines. When that video is done, you can find it in the description. Now for those of you I'm meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you, my viewer. Because I believe that educated people make healthier decisions and that's what this channel is all about. This video also comes with a quick disclaimer, it's meant purely informational, this is not medical advice and if you're looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. Now let's get started. As almost the entire world knows by now, the coronavirus, or COVID-19 as it's also called, endangers thousands of lives and it has a huge impact on all our healthcare systems and our economies. And that's why the entire world also is involved in finding an effective treatment or a vaccine. And I spent my whole weekend reading the most recent clinical trials. That's the only upside of a quarantine, it gives you a lot of time to read. Now, as you can imagine, this took me a long time. So please, if you want to reward my efforts, like the video. Now let's take a look at the current treatments used in clinical practice. And unfortunately, there is no effective treatment yet. All treatment options are aimed at reducing symptoms the coronavirus might cause. This is known as supportive care. 41% of all hospitalized patients is given oxygen to ventilate their lungs, so they can breathe normally and 18% of all hospitalized patients glucocorticoids are given to reduce the inflammation and to help them open their lungs. And almost all patients are given paracetamol to reduce their fever and overall complaints. But ultimately, doctors are just buying time and comfort here. Our bodies still need to get rid of the virus all on their own and this takes time. And all this time the virus multiplies in our bodies, making us sicker and sicker. And that's of course where an effective treatment would come in handy. Now, in order to find the most effective treatment or a vaccine for that matter, we need to do a lot of studies, clinical trials. In these studies, we test the effectiveness of the treatment as well as possible side effects and dangers. And this takes time, a lot of time, especially when a drug is not yet approved to be tested on humans in general or specifically on COVID-19 patients, but more on that later. Now by March 20th, about 86 clinical trials were started to test a certain treatment for the coronavirus. And I will discuss the most interesting ones here. Now some of these trials are done to test a certain antiviral drugs. Now typically an antiviral drug is made specifically to treat one virus, which means they can be used to treat other viruses. However, in one of these trials, the drug Avagen is used in 340 Chinese patients. Now, the most recent results show high levels of safety, which of course is very important, but it also is clearly effective in patients with mild symptoms. It lowers the time they are sick. However, Avagen is not that effective in patients with severe symptoms, and these are the patients that need treatment the most. Next up, there is chloroquine and hydrochloroquine. Both drugs are made to treat malaria and rheumatoid arthritis. But from previous research in 2005, we know that these drugs can be used to stop the spread of SARS-CoV, which is closely related to the coronavirus. Now, cell studies already have been done, and indeed, they showed that it stopped the coronavirus from entering a human cell and replicating in it, and replicating in it, which is good news, of course. And therefore, clinical trials are started to check the effectiveness of these drugs in humans. And by now, there's a lot of anecdotal good news. However, no real evidence yet. So in the upcoming months, these clinical trials will gather a lot of evidence and will indeed show us if these hydrochloroquine and chloroquine are effective treatments for COVID-19. Time will tell. And exactly the same can be said about remdesivir, which was originally developed as a treatment for Ebola. Remdesivir is also proven to effectively inhibit the growth of viruses, similar to the coronavirus. And for now, there's a lot of anecdotal excitement, but no real clinical improvements yet. So we just have to wait, and the trials will show us if indeed it's an effective treatment. There's also some excitement for HIV treatments. Lopinavir and Ritonavir, 
But some new data from a study in China showed no real benefits when patients took this drug, so it's probably not effective. And lastly, there are some trials testing immune suppressants, among which the drug Actemra, and some blood pressure drugs, for example, Losartan. Both could eventually prove to be effective treatments for COVID-19, but for now there's no evidence yet. So again, we still have to wait. Now we have just discussed the most interestingly and important clinical trials, but I also want to address some concerns. Now the problem with some of these trials is that our doctors and researchers get desperate. Usually we use an elaborate, evidence-based process to test medication. We need to compare it with a placebo effect and see if it's safe and what these side effects are. This process takes months or sometimes even years. We start testing the drug in cells and then work our way up in mammals, from mice to ape. And lastly, we test it on humans. This is probably the most important step. And in order to reach good quality evidence, you need a lot of humans, hundreds and most of the time even thousands. And you need to test them in a controlled environment for a prolonged amount of time, six to 24 months. And that's a long time. Some of the clinical trials consist only of a handful of patients, sometimes even less than 20, which is way too little to prove effectiveness. In addition, patients with other underlying diseases are often excluded from these studies. This is quite a normal procedure in medical studies, but it does make the results look better than they would be if tested on the general population. So we need to keep that in mind. And maybe most importantly, in order to fast track these treatment researches, we skip crucial parts in their development. For example, we don't test them as rigorously on mammals because this takes time. However, as always is the case, slow and steady would win the race. Not only could we end up with less effective treatments, they could also be dangerous and that's not what we want. We all want the fastest path to an effective treatment, but cutting corners will not get us there. On the bright side, there are still researchers and doctors which cling on to evidence-based medicine. They are setting up high quality clinical trials with a lot of patients and those will give us the answers we need. And as soon as we have them, I will let you know. Now, I believe it's important that we keep educating ourselves because smarter people make healthier decisions. And this is especially important in times with threats as the coronavirus. Now, I made a whole playlist with everything you need to know on the coronavirus and you can find it in the description. Now, thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer all of them. Also, feel free to leave a like to this video. This will help out the channel tremendously and lets YouTube know it's worth recommending this video to other people. And lastly, if you want to be part of the How to Medicate family, then consider subscribing. And as always, I will hopefully see you next week with a new video on coronavirus vaccines. See you then. Bye-bye.